Hey everybody, it's Michelle here. I'm with my lovely cat Carl. He uh, he would not leave me alone, typically doesn't if I'm trying to do something. <laughs> so I figure, well, bring him on in and let's record together. I just recently, just yesterday actually, released my latest issue of my Full Moon Offerings newsletter. And I thought I would do something a little different uh, and read you guys what I wrote. From the newsletter and I'll share a little bit about my process with it and where I'm at with everything what I'm offering this month and some of the other offerings that I have too so this is issue number eight this came out yesterday as I just said in uh, it was a full moon in Sagittarius I go off of the tropical astrology uh, tropical system some people do sidereal, which would put us in the full moon in Scorpio. But I, I, I've just always done tropical, so that's what I'm going with. And I follow that, so I'm not going to stray from it right now in, this, in the middle of it. I'm not going to try and explain sidereal or tropical versus what's better or whatever. It's a personal preference, so you can do what you want to do. I follow tropical, so we're in full moon in Sagittarius. We had a full lunar eclipse. We also had a, a super moon. So we had a lot of powerful energy going on, not only just yesterday when the moon was full, but the days leading up to the full moon and now the days even after the full moon. So that's the thing with the moon and with a lot of things. It's not just that one time when the moon is full that it, it, that these energies are only there. It's the buildup and then the, the coming down. So all this energy just kind of stays around. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start reading as if you were opening up my newsletter and reading it for yourself. So we've got uh, Full Moon Offerings, issue number eight. Welcome to my Full Moon Offerings monthly newsletter. Released on every full moon, each issue will showcase limited edition products for purchase, herbal insights, and full moon highlights. All the products shared will be small bash creations available only while supplies last. The current full moon offering is my black pulling salve. This ointment can help draw out the venom of bee stings, insect, and snake bites from the body. It also has the ability to extract splinters, slivers, and fluid of boils. Activated charcoal and bentonite clay help rid unwanted substances from the body while oils of coconut and grapeseed moisturize and protect the skin. So I just want to show you this salve. This is really special. So here it is. Hope you can see that. Black pulling salve. These are also usually called, called drawing salves. So the whole concept behind them is to just be able to pull things out as I just read. This is black as night. So the uh, activated charcoal is what makes it black. It goes on the skin black and it will stain. Uh, it will stain clothing, any light color clothing it could stain. It will eventually maybe wash out, but uh, activated charcoal sometimes can leave stains depending on what the surface is. Um, it will come out of your skin eventually, but this salve was put to the test when my boyfriend was stung by a wasp about a month ago. And he was stung on his hand and immediately his hand started swelling. And I remembered, oh, the pulling salve. So I ran to the house and got it and put it onto the sting. And within like a minute or two, the pain was totally gone and the swelling of his hand stopped and he had no issues whatsoever for the rest of the evening. So this, this stuff really works. I've uh, put it on splinters that I've gotten like recently and it totally does. It doesn't, it's not like it's gonna like just pop it out <laughs> of, your, uh, of your skin or something, but what it does is it just to helps kind of like move it along um, so that you can get it get like a splinter to the point where you can actually like see it coming out of the skin a little bit more if it's like really in there so you can like pluck it out with the tweezers so that is a really special thing um, and I'm super stoked to be sharing it as a full moon offering so the next section here is called draw back your bow this month's this sorry this month brings a full lunar eclipse in the sign of of Sagittarius the centaur or the archer the full moon will also be an extra bright supermoon Sagittarius is ruled by the expansive planet of Jupiter 
and the bold element of fire. The energy of Sagittarius upon this moon will lend opportunities to set personal goals, evaluate how you place trust in yourself and others, and release things that no longer serve you. Now, full moons are always about release, but this one in particular has releasing energy. Because as I said, it's the archer or the centaur. Now the archer and the centaur, their bows are, are pulled back, man. And the tension is tight. And Sagittarius, the, the bow is at the point where it's ready to be released. So you have that moment where you are holding the bow and you either release it or you don't. And so this moon had a lot of energy going on with that. So there was a lot of opportunity to be able to let go of things. There's always opportunity, opportunity to do that, but this full moon may have brought up issues that you maybe need to release, or maybe you've been waiting to do something. Maybe you've had a goal that you've been going for and you just haven't been able to pull the trigger or jump off the cliff, whatever, you know, where you want to describe it, this full moon could have put you into a position where you had to release. And the more you are able to release during any time, but specifically this time, the further your bow is going to go and the further you're going to be propelled towards the goal or whatever it was that you had set forth to do, you will go further specifically during this time. And with the energy of Sagittarius, you just have fire under your ass to go. And that's the other thing, that Sagittarius is a fire sign. And so there's just a quickness and there's a fierce energy. There's a element of caution, I guess you could say, because just like any of the elements, they're all very powerful, but fire, it moves very fast. And so you have to be careful with it. You have to pay attention to it because if you don't, if you turn your back, on a fire in a particular area that might, you know, have some more maybe dry kindling around or dry trees or whatever around that could catch really easily. If you turn away, you might turn back and that fire could be ablazing. And so that's the thing about it. Um, and uh, Sagittarius is actually um, an, an energy that it's like there's a, a doing energy and a very like, um, persevering energy. So uh, any challenges that may have been presented to you during this time, maybe you found it a little bit easier to deal with them. I don't know. Everybody's different. Everybody sees things differently and uh, there's energy all around. So it's whether or not you want to tune in. It's uh, up to you. So this section here is all about my available past moon offerings is what I call it. So every single month, I release one product or two sometimes with this newsletter. So I do have a few other products that are still available. And um, if you'd like to order any of the products that I'm talking about, you can actually email me. And you'll want to email me at michelleshealinghome at gmail.com. And uh, you can uh, let me know what products you want. And then uh, we'll figure out shipping and payment and all that kind of stuff after after we settle up what you're wanting to get. So uh, one of my uh, offerings that was from last month actually is my uh, fresh mugwort tincture. Uh, this is a one ounce bottle and it's $11. So this is a great remedy to help calm the mind and nourish the nervous system. Mugwort is ruled by the moon and Venus, making a superb antidote to regulate menstrual cycles, ease cramps and induce lucid dreams. It can also be used as an herbal bitter to stimulate digestion and relieve intestinal distress. And I actually happen to have it right here. I didn't even, I didn't line up all the products, but this one was just sitting on my uh, desk because I was using it actually. So um, this is such a great remedy to have uh, for women specifically, but for men as well. Um, I use it um, when I'm about to have my period or if I have cramping, um, it really can actually help to reduce menstrual cramps in a really great way. So the um, other offering that I still have is my antifungal and wound healing salve. Now this uh, goes for $20 for a two ounce jar. I've been making this salve uh, for at least six or seven years. It's one of the first 
products I ever made when I began studying herbalism and it is tried and true. I keep it around at all times. I always have it in stock and I have lots of people that have had really great success using it and keep it in their first aid kit all the time. So this, this protective salve is a great addition to any first aid kit or medicine cabinet. I developed it to help heal cracked, cracked, chapped skin, cuts, scrapes, lesions, athlete's foot, and other fungal infections of the skin and toenails. It can even help soothe the sting of cold sores and fever blisters. And the third full moon offering that I still have around is my CBD and white willow bark salve. This one is $30 for a two ounce tin. This salve offers soothing pain relief to overworked muscles, achy joints, and irritated skin. Made with organic cannabis root and high CBD cannabis infused oil, organic white willow bark infused olive oil, beeswax, essential oils of blue chamomile, frankincense, Himalayan cedar, and patchouli, along with soy free vitamin E oil. This is a very special salve. I made, I started making this a couple years ago when I began to learn that you can use the cannabis root. Um, not many people use the root, but um, it's actually an ancient Chinese herbal uh, remedy and it does have pain relieving properties and uh, I really enjoy using it. it. Whenever I can try and use like the whole plant for something, I usually go that route. And so with the cannabis, seems like it was a uh, very, um, very just like it made sense. And what I found that the cannabis root actually does as well is that it actually helps um, penetrate more deeply, just like roots, they go deep. And so the, uh, the cannabis root will really help to get to like deeper pain, uh, deep muscle aches and deep nerve pain. And lastly, I have uh, my pure and, pure and protective deodorant. Uh, this is another thing that I've been making like for at least six or seven years. It was one of my first things I ever created. Um, and I just love it. And I use it personally. Uh, my boyfriend uses it. I have friends that use it and have been using it ever since I began making it. Uh, and it, it's it's just great. I really love it. It's super, it's super clean. It's very minimal. Uh, so it's a gentle and moisturizing deodorant that offers all day protection made with organic unrefined coconut oil, shea butter, arrowroot powder, baking soda, and pure essential oils. It's super, it's super great. And a little goes a long way, which is awesome. Um, usually like one, one, two ounce jar is a one to three month supply for one person, depending on how much you use it. I have a friend who she only uses deodorant, like, you know, sparingly and it'll last for like a year. So, I mean, it's one of those things where it just depends on, on your personal usage or whatever. And, uh, now we're back to the black pulling salve again. Uh, so this salve will forever be an item in my personal herbal first aid kit. When applied to bee stings, snake, mosquito, or other insect bites, it will reduce itch and remove venom. It can also be used to extract splinters, slivers, and the fluid of boils. This salve was put to the test when my boyfriend was stung by a wasp. He was stung on his hand, which immediately began to swell. When I applied a small amount of the salve to the site of the sting, the swelling of his hand and pain of the sting stopped almost immediately. The ingredients of the salve are uh, organic fresh lavender infused grapeseed oil, organic unrefined coconut oil, activated charcoal, bentonite clay, vitamin E oil, and essential oils of tea tree and geranium. Um, this also can be used on pimples. I haven't used it on that, but you can extract fluid from skin lesions and boils. So um, I, I, would, I would say that you could give it a try on, on pimples and things like that because we all know you don't want to squeeze that shit. Now, I used to do that too when I would break out because you're so self-conscious about it and you're like, oh God, everyone's going to look at it and you squeeze it and then it's like, just gets bigger and redder and grosser and, uh, and then you're just like more self-conscious. So don't squeeze, apply, <laughs> apply things that will heal it and just let it be. It's like, God, for so many years, I like suffered. I suffered. I, it was like self-induced suffering because it's like, um, you know, 
you'd have zits or whatever and it's like guess what not many pe people aren't like paying that much attention to you so like kind of get over yourself and just know that there's lots of like remedies and things that will naturally heal help us naturally heal and know that when we have things like zits or cold sores or whatever it's uh it's something else going on in our body too like our body's trying to rid something so it's trying to like rid toxins from us it's trying to like express something and get it out and so that's why salves like this and things like activated charcoal and bentonite clay and stuff super valuable to have around because they help they just help move things along and that's what it's all about like your body is just constantly like wanting to like cycle things through and flush things out and just like renew itself and uh, our bodies are amazing and so that's why we have like our lymphatic system and all sorts of systems that just like continuously move i mean our hearts are pumping blood continuously so before we get off topic of the uh, newsletter just remember that you know our bodies can heal our bodies heal itself and we can help it along um not only just like emotionally and f but physically too by uh using herbs and other natural things to just like keep the process going all right so every issue i also share either like a recipe uh usually for the offering that i have because i always i look at it like hey you know someone might uh not want to buy the sab but they might want to try and make it so i always try and like share my recipe or share a video of like how i made what what i'm offering so that people can have options so um i do have on this issue um how to make a black pulling salve and uh, you can go to my website, michelleshealinghome.com, and you can go to the blog tab, and it will be the first blog post. Uh, will be a DIY uh, black salve recipe. So you can uh, check that out and um, learn, learn how to make it if you want to make it instead of buy it. All right, and then I also do like a quick rundown of just stuff about the moon, things that I know, things I research about the moon, and just like kind of also, I guess, um, the things that come through for me with the moon, if that makes sense. I like to like kind of just sit with the energy, see what comes through. Sometimes not much comes through and I'd have to you know, kind of like uh, do more research or whatever, but all in all together, I kind of like to just do a combination of like the stuff that I, I'm familiar with um, to share with other people. The full moon this month will be shadowed by a full lunar eclipse. Like last month, this moon will be a super moon that will shine more brightly due to its placement in the sky. The influence of Sagittarius will bring attention to areas of our lives that pertain to freedom, travel, truth, natural law, and belief systems. Eclipses offer up a chance to reset and reboot. This particular time is all about letting go and lightening your load. By doing so, opportunities for change and personal growth may be presented to you in new ways. As a fixed fire sign, Sagittarius is determined, steadfast, and capable of persevering through distraction, fear, and doubt. This sign is represented by a centaur or an archer. Both characters wield a bow and arrow that's drawn back and ready to be released. The drawing back of the bow is a critical moment for the archer. Their intentions must be clear and their aim steady. They must have full faith in their abilities and a strong connection to their inner wisdom in order to hit the mark. If they stray from the original target, they jeopardize the success of their shot. The want to hit the target is one thing, but to remain focused and have the will and patience to do so is another. Very true. So um, I want to show here if I can get it on here. So uh, it's going to be backwards. Oh, well. Okay, so right here, this is the glyph or the symbol for Sagittarius. So we have the arrow that's pointing upward. And then next to it here, this is the glyph or the symbol for the planet Jupiter, which Sagittarius is ruled by. So um, I always like to include those because these symbols, they say a lot about the energy of each sign and each planet. So I have some Sagittarius correspondences. The ruling planet is Jupiter. Ruling element is fire. The energy, creative and steadfast. 
body parts and organs, hips and thighs, sciatic nerve, lower spine. The symbol is the centaur or the archer. Now a centaur, for people who don't know, is a, uh, it's a man who has a half horse body and, it, okay, so the lower half of the, is a horse and then the upper half is uh, a man from the torso up and he is holding a bow, drawing it back, ready to release. These are super powerful, mystical creatures. Um, you can do research on them. Uh, the centaur is uh, related to Chiron, who is the wounded healer. I was on the fence if I should go into that for this newsletter because it just kind of like goes down another rabbit hole and I probably would have like wanted to write a handful like of more paragraphs about it but wanted to keep this one short but if you're interested look up um, Chiron the wounded healer and you can find out all information about his story it's a really beautiful story but basically Chiron was um, born kind of like a freak I mean he's like has a half uh, horse half man so the story is that his mother abandoned him and uh, the abandonment totally uh, left him deeply wounded. And this deep wound uh, allowed him to uh, heal and become a better healer. So he basically uh, healed his wounds so that he could help others heal. And that's been my story as well. And constantly, we're constantly healing. There's always something that will come up that uh, is asking to be healed. So um, Chiron has just a beautiful, it's a beautiful um, story and a mythological creature. So um, we all have a Chiron in our astrological charts as well. So you can find it, find information on it. Um, if you research Chiron astrological chart, you can find out where it is in your chart. And it, it, it really does. It kind of like um, gives you a good perspective on uh, things that may come up for you that might be deep uh, wounds or traumas that you, uh, if you choose to heal them, could actually help you to really like excel in your life. Uh, right, back to it. So um, I always like to do a little like um, section on herbs that are really good, uh, either that are ruled by the planet, uh, which in this case would be Jupiter, or that might be good for um, Sagittarius, um, or might have like more Sagittarius energy, or that they're also like um, correspond with Sagittarius or fire. So we have sage, reishi mushroom, sarsaparilla root, white willow bark, and juniper berries. The tarot card that is associated with this uh, sign is uh, the temperance card, which I probably could have pulled that out, but I'm not going to just right now. But you can look up the temperance card. It's the 14th card in the major arcana. It's a beautiful card. It's, um, it's a lady who's pouring uh, water from two cups, and uh, it's all about like balance. It's, uh, it's, it's, really, it's a really pretty card, and uh, I highly recommend looking into it if you've never seen it before. So some Sagittarius attributes, uh, the light on the light side, more positive side is um, they're optimistic, generous, dedicated, and idealistic. The darker side, prideful, restless, arrogant, and dismissive. Now I do the light and the dark because there is a light and a dark side to everything. There's black and there's white. There is evil and good and we all have those things all of it <laughs> you can't just have the light and you can't just have the dark it has to balance so that's why I like to show um, both both of those sides and then for Jupiter's attributes we have on the light side radiant captivating intellectual and abundant and the dark is overbearing harsh scattered and wasteful this full moon will place emphasis on faith and trust, specifically surrounding issues of the heart, family, home, and community. Aim to use this energy to set goals and intentions while keeping your hopes and dreams in mind. Take time to mend relationships that may have ended due to lack of trust and misunderstanding. It may also be a good time to review your personal values along with how you show up for yourself and others. Allow the optimistic and dedicated energy of Sagittarius help you shed self-doubt and commit to becoming the best version of yourself. And there we have it. 
So that is just a sampling of the Full Moon Offering newsletter and kind of how it goes. Um, if you're interested in signing up for it, uh, you can uh, you can email me, uh, michelleshealinghome at gmail.com. You can leave me a comment below this video. Just leave me your name and your email. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram uh, at Michelle's Healing Home. Uh, and you can find me on TikTok at Michelle's Healing Home. So there's a handful of ways. You can also find my, you can go to my website, michelleshealinghome.com. There is a newsletter tab there and you can actually uh, go through every single issue. I have all the issues archived. Now this, I just started doing this this year. Like I said, this is issue number eight. So I'm going through each sign of the zodiac. I'm just following the moon cycle. It's been really great. I feel like every single month is, um, it just, it just, I just learn more. I uh, figure out different ways to present the information. It's just, it's just, it's been a really cool, uh, cool thing for me. It's a good challenge. It keeps me on it, and uh, I, I thrive when I have something that I do like, you know, every month. It just, it just keeps me, keeps me on this kind of thing, and um, it's good. So uh, I kind of thrive on organization. One of the other things, because I have it right here, um, this book, okay, so The Zodiac and the Salts of Salvation. This book is freaking awesome. Now, I will say that um, this book is kind of heady. And when I say that, it's just uh, kind of like, um, basically when I first started reading it, like I would read like a page and I'd have to go back and reread certain sections of it because I'd be like wait what because I'm pretty sure if I remember right it's from like the 30s don't quote me on that let's see yeah 1932 so j there's just a little bit kind of like languagey kind of things but what's really cool about this is that um he goes through homeopathic homeopathic remedies for each sign and um also something called cell salts, which I, I'm not going to go into entirely right now um, because it could be a, like a whole other video. And I don't like 100% like I understand it like on a surface level, but I haven't done like major research on it. But basically every single sign has a cell salt that's associated with it. And a cell salt is basically like a, like a mineral. And uh, each like some signs are lacking those those specific cell salts. So there's a lot of benefits to uh, taking the cell salt that you may be lacking. Um, and you can even take cell salts that you maybe already have and they might help you with like certain ailments. But anyway, it's something that I've just kind of like sort of studied over the last like two years. So like I said, I'm not an expert on it at all. But um, yeah, this, this book is really great. Um, if you're into astrology and the sim then the symbology behind each sign and kind of more of like the deeper meanings behind the signs and what you know kind of like what are the goings on of it i'm interested in astrology in a different way than just like horoscopes and stuff when i was a younger girl yeah horoscopes i always was like oh, what's my horoscope or whatever but it wasn't until i got older until i realized that like this shit is deep man like it's it's really deep and our signs like they, they say a lot about us and whether or not you believe in it uh is up to you but they really do say a lot about us and there's all sorts of things that um that you can like see on somebody, like the shape of their face, the shape of their eyes, their nose, the way they carry themselves. It could, like, their, their, uh, their astrological signs could come through with that. So uh, before I just continue to ramble, I just wanted to, uh, yeah, try something different with you guys. So I hope you enjoyed uh, my little read through of my newsletter. Again, this was uh, my full moon's offering newsletter, issue number eight. Full Moon and Sagittarius. Um, the next issue will be released on um, June 24th, and it's in the sign of Capricorn, which is, that's my sign. So uh, it'll be really fun to do some Capricorn uh, stuff and information, and um, I'm not sure what the remedy uh, or the offering is going to be yet, but stay tuned. And yes, do uh, sign up if you're interested. And if not, hey, maybe I'll do this read through again. So maybe you'll just want to be, uh, 
listening to me read to you and that's totally fine. So you have a really great evening or a great day and take care. Carl wants to get out. So I think that means it's really time to go. Alrighty. Take care. Thank you.